Today I've got a nice limit, which was suggested from a viewer from Syria. And I've actually changed the problem just a tiny bit to generalize it, but I'll point that out. So our goal is to find the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed over the square root of x squared plus a minus x cubed over the square root of x squared plus b. And in the original problem, a was equal to five and b was equal to three. Although this generalization is kind of quite obvious and doesn't really make the problem that hard, much harder. Okay, so let's maybe see how we could do this. Well, notice it's an indeterminate form. We have an infinity minus an infinity indeterminate form. That's because the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator in each of those rational expressions. It's not quite a rational expression because we have a radical in the denominator here, but it's close enough. So that means we probably want to do some sort of simplification procedure to get this into a more maybe proper or easier to deal with indeterminate form. And here what we'll do is multiply each one by something to give us a common denominator. So for this first term, we need to multiply by the square root of x squared plus b over the square root of x squared plus b. And then for this second term, we'll multiply by the square root of x squared plus a over the square root of x squared plus a. And that means our common denominator will just be the product of that, those two denominators. So let's see. That's going to leave us with something like this. We'll have the limit as x approaches infinity. We'll have x cubed times, let's see, the square root of x squared plus b minus the square root of x squared plus a over the square root of x squared plus a times the square root of x squared plus b. So I put some things together, but I think that's okay. Now looking at this, we still have a little bit of simplification to do before we can move on. And that's because we've got this difference of square roots in the numerator. We'd like to change that difference of square roots to a sum of square roots. And we can do that by multiplying by the so-called radical conjugate. So let's do that. Our radical conjugate will be the square root of x squared plus b plus the square root of x squared plus a. We need to do that upstairs and downstairs. So let's see. Good. So obviously downstairs, we're gonna have some simplification with like x squared plus a multiplying into x squared plus a, and then x squared plus b multiplying into x squared plus b. And then in the numerator, we'll have some simplification. We'll have some simplification because we're multiplying something that looks like a difference of squares. Notice we've got something minus something and then the same thing plus something. So that means in the end, in the numerator, we'll have this brown underlined square minus this red underlined square. Okay, so anyway, let's look at what we have. We'll have the limit as x approaches infinity. We have x cubed. That brown underlined squared will give us x squared plus b. And then minus that red underlined squared will be x squared plus a. Okay, then let's see what we have in the denominator. Well, for this first term, we'll have x squared plus b times the square root of x squared plus a, because that purple stuff squares and gets rid of the square root. For the second term, we'll have something similar with the blue underlying stuff. So that'll be x squared plus a times the square root of x squared plus b. So something like that. Now let's notice that this x squared will cancel this x squared in the numerator and leave us with b minus a. So I can maybe factor that b minus a out and then we'll have the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared over this sum. We have x squared plus b times radical x squared plus a plus x squared plus a times radical x squared plus b. Okay, so, and that's an x cubed in the numerator, which I had a typo from the last step. Okay, 
So now let's notice that the numerator and the denominator have the same degree. The degree of the numerator is kind of obviously three because we've got an x cubed. And then here we have a quadratic thing. And then here we have a quadratic inside of a square root. So since two divided by two is one, the degree of the denominator is acting like two plus one or three. Now you could do a couple of things here. I think the viewer in his email suggested L'Hopital's rule, but I think it's a little bit easier just to do kind of a straightforward simplification by multiplying the numerator by one over x cubed, and then also multiplying the denominator by one over x cubed. But I'm gonna take that denominator and write it as one over x squared times one over x. And that's because I'm gonna take the one over x squared term and then multiply it into these yellow underlines and the one over x and multiply it in these pink underlines. Keeping in mind that this one over x is really the same thing as one over the square root of x squared. Okay, so that's gonna leave me with b minus a and then I'll have the limit as x approaches infinity. Now the numerator is just one, so that's nice. And then the denominator will be one plus b over x squared. That's what we have from this one over x squared multiplying through here. And then the square root of, let's see, um, one plus a over x squared. That's from that first pink term. And then we have plus one plus a over x squared and then the square root of one plus b over x squared. So we're left with something like that. And now we can use the fact that the limit as x goes to infinity of anything over x squared will be equal to zero. So that means this term right here tends towards zero, this term right here tends towards zero, this right here tends towards zero, and then this last one right here also tends towards zero. Leaving us with one over one plus one in the denominator, or really one over two. Combining that with the b minus a leaves us with b minus a over two. And that would be a final answer for this limit, and that's a good place to stop.